Hello, everybody. Thank you for introducing me. So um, I'm glad to be here today to discuss how we're using um, ONT sequencing to support the conservation of gorillas. So we are all aware that we're living through one of the worst extinction events in the history of our planet. In fact, we're losing an ever-growing number of animals and plants and gorillas. One of our closest relatives and in ecological important species are no um, exception. In fact, the combination of threats such as poaching, habitat loss and fragmentation and disease, in combination with um, challenges to their conservation like political instability in the countries of origin, corruption and the lack of well-established research facilities are really driving the number down um, to worrying levels. In order to reverse this trend, we need to come up with a way, with an effective way to monitor changes in white gorilla populations. And to do that, we need a tool that allows us to identify species, subspecies of gorilla, for the four different subspecies. Um, this is particularly important if we're trying to combat wildlife related crimes such as bushmeat that is becoming particularly um, profitable in, um, in Africa. And we also need a means to uh, identify different individuals so that we can estimate population size and also assess how threats and conservation actions are, um, are affecting the numbers of wild gorillas. <clears throat> so um, technological advances have allowed researchers to rely on DNA testing in recent decades um, to do just that. And in particular, they uh, used capillary electrophoresis of microsatellites for individual identification and mitogenome sequencing for the uh, identification of species. However, the advent of next and third generation sequencing have allowed us to have access to all sorts of different genetic markets, including biparentally inherited single nucleotide polymorphisms. And these can and have been successfully used for the identification of both species and individuals. And in addition, being single-based changes um, uh, in, in our genome, uh, they uh, require short fragments of DNA in order to be analyzed and amplified. Um, and this is uh, particularly good when we are uh, relying on non-invasive samples, such as uh, hair and feces, um, to lower, which contain either low amounts of highly degraded DNA, to lower the disturbance to the animals and to spread the risk of spreading um, infectious diseases that we know have been uh, wiping out entire families of eastern lowland gorillas in recent years. One of the uh, issues uh, um, with uh, DNA testing in animal conservation and wildlife conservation in general is the really high startup fees for the acquisition of, of uh, the laboratory equipment. And also, as I mentioned in my, in my uh, introductory slide, is the lack of well-established research, research facilities, meaning that <clears throat> samples have to be shipped uh, from Africa to sites where uh, sequencing can be conducted. And uh, these increase the time and costs of sequencing, especially because there are international regulations that really limit the export of biological samples, any sort of biological samples from endangered species. However, again, the improvements in the technologies, and in particular the uh, uh, commercialization of portable laboratory equipment, such as the mini PCR and the Bento Lab, now allow us to do DNA extraction, amplification, and library preparation directly in, in, in the field. And of course, the uh, delivery of the ONT mean ion device now also enables researchers to uh, conduct sequencing uh, in, in, in remote areas. So, uh, for this project, we utilized uh, published whole genome sequencing data to derive two different sets of SNPs. One for uh, species or subspecies identification, and these are SNPs that are fixed in one subspecies and absent in the others. And another one containing highly heterozygous SNPs across individuals, and this uh, set is used uh, for individual identification. So, uh, to assess the performance, uh, we then designed the primers. And to assess the performance on, on non-invasive samples, we, um, we were provided with matched blood, hair, and fecal samples uh, from Twycrow Zoo and Aspira Foundation. 
um, we tested, on which we tested our primers in, a, in, a, in the lab. So uh, for this, we utilized both the mean ion and the flongo flow cells for side-by-side -side comparison in conjunction with the ligation sequencing kit and the native barcoding expansion. We then followed the standard GAPI approach for the base calling, Minimap for the alignment, and BCF tools for uh, uh, the variant calling. So here I'm showing the um, length range of a core set of 43 uh, loci that amplified across all different individuals and runs. So we can see how they span from 111 to 228 bases. So they're really short, again, because we want them to work on non-invasive samples and therefore highly degraded DNA. Um, so here, briefly about uh, my results. So on the y-axis, we have different individuals. On the x-axis, we have uh, different SNPs. So this is, uh, this, um, is about species identification SNPs. So we can clearly see three different patterns here. We have uh, western gorillas on the lower panel, and then eastern lowland and mountain gorillas. So our SNP um, set for the identification of species was effective for the identification of different cell species. So, so similarly, for the individual identification SNPs, we have again uh, individuals on the y-axis, and we can see how each row is different from the others, meaning that these uh, SNPs were also effective for individual identification. Not only that, we were also able to reconstruct a family pedigree from a group of samples we received from um, Twycross Zoo. So this is another really important bit of information for in-situ and ex-situ conservation and management of gorillas. So the take-home message from this project is that SNPs are indeed a, a, a good market for the, um, um, for the analysis of non-invasive samples, and short fragments can indeed be uh, uh, sequenced using the um, ONT uh, technology. Um, and with that, I would like to thank my supervisors, Mark, John, and Celia, and also Pile, Chris, and Yali from the Sangha Welcome Institute for their support and uh, uh, some of the samples we use in the validation process. And then I would like to thank you all for listening.